Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with his Monday guest and expert, Mr. Greg Dickerson. How you doing, sir? Doing fantastic, Michael. How are you today? Uh, I'm doing okay, personally, but I'm a little bit concerned about the U.S. economy. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, but there was a horrible, ugly, atrocious print on Friday for consumer sentiment. 61.7, lowest since August of 2011, if memory serves. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. It's it's real. It's front page and it's inflation. It's all about inflation. And inflation is only the first step in what's to come. A lot of areas when you look at like real estate taxes, things like that, sales tax, occupancy tax to cover the deficits that cities and states have, you know, due to the pandemic, you know, and values of real estate rising, they're going to get hit with that, which is going to be a whole nother inflationary tax that mm -hmm. people aren't expecting. And we're seeing it in our area. It's all over the news how real estate taxes are going up. And, uh, you know, everybody loves the value of their property going up until the tax bill hits. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I've, uh, I, I've been following the consumer for 30 years. That's, you know, every economist or everybody studied. You got to find your thing. And for me, it's always been the consumer. So I dug into this consumer sentiment number over the weekend. And it was horrible and atrocious. I want to tell you right now, it's even worse than the headline. This is why. Uh, so I want to make sure I have the numbers here. Where am I? Here we go. Uh, the households that make over 100K, right? So more than the median, right? The median household is about 70K this, uh, these days. So, but the median household over 100K was the largest drop. The drop was 26.6 points. Uh, it was the largest drop ever. The only drop that was close to this was 21.7 points. And that was August of 2011. You remember August, two, or at least 2011. That was a horrible time in our economy. And we just had a drop that was bigger than that. And this concerns me because if you have, I'll call them the rich, retreating and being that negative, they are going to stop shopping, stop spending, and we are going to have a recession. Because we already have a pr producer problem. Suppliers were, I don't know, 5% of Q4 GDP. I talked about a small business this morning who usually carries $94,000 in inventory. Now they're carrying 327 grand because the supply chain's all whack. They're not buying anything in Q1. So if we have small businesses not buying and now we have the rich not spending, I have no idea why, how we don't have a recession starting in Q1. Well, and you know the Fed has to create one to slow to slow inflation down. So you need a you need a uh, recession. You need uh, the economy to slow down a little bit so that inflation can come back down and we can reset and start this start this all over again. I mean, we've been on QE since two thousand eight and nine. Interest rates were set to zero. They didn't raise rates till twenty fifteen. They raised them for a couple of years and then backtracked back to zero. So you know, at some point, all this has to unwind. And what's happening with, you know, consumer sentiment, you know, that's how people feel about the economy, feel about their spending power. And when you're, you know, when you're at the median income levels of the 100,000, you know, in those areas, and then the lower income levels, you know, inflation is huge. I mean, yeah. it's huge. It affects their ability to survive at some levels. And, you know, all that discretionary income and spending is gone. It's been wiped out by inflation. Most people, at the end of the day, if they have 10% left over, after all expenses to spend on discretionary expenses like movies and entertainment and going out to eat and things like that, that's gone now with inflation where it's at. Uh, people at the end of the day that are paycheck to paycheck, they're probably negative in building, you know, and, and you know, living on credit right now to get through. And I think, you know, the reports will show that credit, household credit is up, savings is down. So it's, it's a serious problem. Yeah. And, and again, when I look at this is, and again, sentiment and actual spending are very different. That's why Wednesday's retail sales numbers are so important. Expectations are for 2%, if I'm right. Yeah, 2% Yeah, growth. you know, but that's a little skewed too, because prices are so high, it can affect that, you know, because exactly. they're looking at sales. They're not looking at real, you know, numbers. Yeah. Is there real growth adjusted for inflation? You're up, and that's exactly where I'm going. Folks, on my channel, I've been talking to you for a month or six weeks about real versus nominal right? The numbers that are going to come out of Wednesday will be nominal growth. And if we have 2% growth in retail sales, but 7% inflation, it's a negative 5%. This, this, this economy is not as healthy as it looks, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's trickling along right now. And I think, um, you know, I think the Fed's finally waking up and recognizing we got to do something. But, you know, they're, they're in that trap right now where, 
I think they're stuck. And I think, unfortunately, you know, there, there needs to be an unwinding and a reset in order for growth to happen and continue again. So it's, it's pretty interesting times. Yeah, I, I, I got to tell you, I mean, the Fed needs to do three things. First, they need to stop digging. They're still, I can't believe they're still buying mortgage-backed securities and treasuries. I can't believe they're still doing that. Thankfully, it'll be over next month, I think March 10th. But damn, stop digging. The first rule of hole digging is you stop digging. Then they've well, got you know, they're supposed to, but you know, the interesting thing is, is that they can't, if they quit buying treasuries, well, then they're no longer the whale in the market. So arguably, you know, yields should get bid up. Exactly. And, you know, that affects the debt that the government has in order, you know, in issuing new, um, you know, new T-bills. So, yeah. you know, again, they're kind of painted into a box here. And I think very interesting to see if they can, you know, sustain, well, if they can work their way out of this corner. I mean, it's, it's a very, very tricky, yeah. delicate environment that they're in. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how it, how it shakes out. Well, I mean, they've, they've got to stop digging. You're right. They're going to stop being well. Not only are they going to stop being the whale, number three, they got to start selling. Just imagine them selling their or reducing their $9 trillion. That's the one that freaks me out, right? Stop yeah, how do digging. you do that? Yeah, how do you? I mean, the only answer is you got to sell them for less and that means higher rates. I mean, that's the only answer. I mean, it's right. A and then what? what's the direct, you know, uh, reflection of that and the de- direct result of that? Mortgage rates, you know, they're yeah. all based off treasuries. Exactly. It, it's, uh, and then you have the risk premium, right? Because th- this is what people need to realize. This 30-year mortgage rate could go up from here, right? Because again, if you have, you A, you have the whale stop buying. That means rates could tick up a little bit. Uh, you have the whale, or then you have the Fed actually raise rates. So the base rate, which is zero, goes to a half. Bullard's talking about 1%. That'll impact it. Then you've got the big mother of all things that could screw things up. They're going to sell. And then you have a recession where banks get nervous. People don't realize that all four of these things could go the wrong way. And we could be over 5% 30 year inside six months. I'm not calling for that. But if all of these things happen, it, it could happen. Yeah. And the Fed's choices right now are double digit inflation or wreck financial markets. That's their choices. I agree. I, I agree 1000%. And last time I checked, the Fed has two mandates, stable prices and you know, full employment. Nowhere in there does it say it's got to keep Wall Street rich. But yeah, it's, um, yeah, 10%. I can't believe it. 10% inflation. It's crazy. Yeah. So uh, what, what do you think? What do you think? Again, I'm so nervous. I saw that consumer sentiment that the 100K families are, are scared. And why I was talking about retail sales, because we're going to see if they back off. Because there's sentiments, one of those leading indicators that sometimes doesn't prove out, right? Because I feel this way, but I still charge my credit card. We're going to find out, I think, on Wednesday if, if, the, if the rich are really backing off. Well, the interesting thing is we've been on this path since 2008 and 9. Yeah, mm-hmm. I keep saying that, but we've been on QE and mm-hmm. zero interest rate policy, basically, since 2008 and 9. The only time you know interest rates increased was 2015 to 2018. He backed off and completely reversed and 2018, I think that was when rates hit two and a quarter, two and a half, something like that, the federal so. funds rate. Yeah, I think so. And we didn't see any kind of serious inflation. You know, mm-hmm. if you look at the history of inflation no. and employment some, and all some that, two percent. Yeah, we never we never saw any serious consequences. And even before you know the pandemic, we still were not uh, having any negative effects. And remember, our conversations were based around man. At some point, you got to see some inflation other than assets. That's the only inflation that we saw was in yeah. asset prices yeah. and asset valuations. So, you know, once you come through the pandemic, supply chain is open back up, you get, you know, you get the world functioning again and caught back up, which is going to take a while. This isn't going to happen overnight. Mm-hmm. Some of this might be temporary. Some of the stuff that we're seeing, you know, will be temporary. Eventually the automobile industry will catch up and inventories will build again and prices mm-hmm. will come down unless they realize, wait a minute, we're really profitable. Yes, Let's yeah. keep supply limited. Exactly. It's a choice, right? Exactly. You know, so they could, you know, that's kind of what comes out of these things a lot of times is business and companies realize, wait a minute, you know, if we limit supply, we could keep our prices up and make a lot more money. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see how it shakes out and, and what the real result is. But, you know, it's, uh, it's fascinating times. It, it's just unbelievable, unprecedented times that we're in. Yeah, 2022 is going to go down as a year like no other. It's, it's, 
and it's right in front of us, right? It's right in front of us. It's, it's going to be fun to watch. I look forward to talking to you about it every week on Mondays. Where can people find you, Greg? Yeah, gregdickerson.com. All my info is there, YouTube channel, podcast. Go check it out. Thanks, buddy.